Hello, welcome to what should be a really exciting conversation with three of our current Spring Tide ambassadors. We have young people from all across the country who participate in the Spring Tide Ambassadors program. And just in the last few weeks, we've opened up the application process for what will be our fifth cohort of SAP. SAP is the shorthand we use for the Spring Tide Ambassadors Program. So I'm going to be joined by three incredible ambassadors. I see their requests right now coming in to join this live conversation. Let's accept the first two. Hi, Hi. Hi. Hello. 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 I'm so glad to have both of you here right now. I think we have one more joining still, but thank you, Brendan. Thank you, Maya. We have three of the four time zones um, that are with us tonight. SAP is a program that literally spans the whole country. Even if we had um, applicants from US territories, that would be welcome as well. Or Hawaii, we can go far with our time zones. You just have to be a current um, young person that lives in the US. So I'm in Eastern time zone tonight. Maya's in Central, if I have it all right. Brendan's in Mountain. And Jonathan, who will hopefully be joining us in just a bit, is here he is. I'm going to accept him. Jonathan's in California. So literally four time zones, all connecting, making a little bit of space in our evening just to share how has it been as a Springtide ambassador? What have you learned? How have you been stretched? How have you grown? What have you appreciated about the program? what would be helpful for someone who's considering applying to here? So um, I'll quickly introduce myself. Would love to have the four of you and then we'll, we'll get into the conversation. If folks do have questions, feel free to, to drop them in the chat or use the question box. But I have, I have some questions in mind that I wanna ask these three about. So my name is Marta Abawaji. I'm the head of community engagement at Springtide Research Institute. And I've been with Springtide for about five years and we started the Springtide Ambassadors Program. We launched it in 2020, um, knowing that our first cohort would be in 2021. So as I mentioned at the beginning of this conversation, we are about to have our fifth cohort. So these three amazing individuals are all in our 2024 cohort of the Springtide Ambassadors Program. They do a 15 month commitment. Each cohort lasts 15 months. So you get a little bit of overlap as one group is exiting a new group is coming in. Um, hopefully just to feel like they're kind of passing the baton and there's some longevity and continuation from one cohort to the next. So let's just go time zone order. <laughs> um, so Maya, that'd be our next one. Moving in to, from Eastern time to <laughs> Central time zone, would you let us know just who you are, a little bit about yourself? Yes. Um, so uh, I am Maya, coming from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Uh, just turned 18 years old just a couple That's weeks ago. Um, Happy birthday. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I play basketball. Um, and just wrapping up my senior year um, in high school right now. Getting ready for college applications yep. and that whole process. Yes. Right? yes. That's something that's really unique about SAP is that we have people in high school, we have college students, we have young professionals. It's, it's a big mix of lifespans you get when you have ages 13 to 23 as the pool of, of applicants that can be a part of this program. Yes. Love, love having you in it, Maya. Okay, Brendan, we're moving into um, mountain time zone. <laughs> I believe I'm in central time. Oh, but Nebraska, but... Nebraska, is that one of the states that sometimes does daylight savings and sometimes doesn't? I know farther west they do time zones a little different. Okay, well, well I, I, what time is it for you right now? 7.30. Oh, so okay, you are central. It's just that sometimes I put Nebraska in the mountain time zone. Yeah. Apologies, apologies <laughs> to anyone in Nebraska that I'm getting good. the time zones wrong. Okay, we're moving uh, across the country nonetheless. So Nebraska. Exactly, same state, same state. <laughs> uh, but I'm Brendan Westlake, I'm from Nebraska. I'm 23 and I am finishing up currently my fifth year of college, last semester on campus. I go into student teaching next semester. Did I hit all my big? 
Yeah, that's great. That's fantastic. Thank you, Brendan. It's a very unique thing in SAP that we have people who are current students and sometimes people that are educating current students, but they're all on the same playing field, so, so to speak, that um, there's, you know, different life experiences that we all appreciate and benefit together. I never feel like the older members of SAP are looking down on the younger members. I feel like a lot of space is made to be like, hey, I have something to learn from you um, in, all, in all directions. So it's very cool that you're moving into student teaching. We're cheering you on in that, that last stage of your education experience in undergrad, Brendan. Okay, okay. Pacific, closing us out in, in right. introductions anyway, Jonathan. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Jonathan. I in California and did I get out everything that I needed to say? Wait, give me a second. Um yeah my pronouns are he him. Yes. There you go. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. It cut out for one sec. Did you say your age? Uh yeah I'm 17. Perfect. Perfect. So we got 17, 18, 23, if I got them, if I got them all right. Um, so yeah, SAP is a spread of different young people from different parts of the country, different life experiences. So to first think back on why you applied in the first place, can the three of you just sort of go back to where you were one year ago, November, December, 2023, when you submitted an application to to throw your hat in the ring to be a Spring Tide ambassador, what what was your interest at the time? What was motivating you to apply to SAP? Anyone can jump in. Um, I think I definitely just wanted the chance to be able to get to know different people that like believe in different things um, and like came from different areas like all across the country and could share di like their different backgrounds and to, I don't know, get a different feel of like diversity, if you will. Yeah. I feel like obviously all of us are surrounded by a lot of different people, but don't like not everyone gets a chance to actually be able to like connect with those in different parts of the country, I guess, and get to sure. like fully hear and like do your best to like understand um, other people that believe in completely different things, whatever. Um, and I feel like it's definitely been like I have learned a lot like coming out of it um and i think it's a great opportunity to be able to like get a better like read and like understanding of people in general love it thanks maya brendan or jonathan what first motivated you to apply i can jump in i i work for campus ministries at my school and my boss is a wonderful listener absolutely she is my boss first and foremost but she has become sort of a therapist, a mom figure on campus. So with working with her, a lot of what we did was just kind of talk reflectively on things. And one day about November, she came up to me during one of our meetings and was like, hey, I have this opportunity to uh, let somebody apply for this program. It's called Springtide. And I said, I'm really busy. Yeah. But yeah. Okay, it. it sounds interesting. So I sat down, I looked at it, and it just looked like a fantastic opportunity to do some more reflective thinking, just talking with other young people. I especially, throwing the educator hat in the ring yet again, but uh, going into education, I just really want to be able to talk with as many different people as I can, see as many different perspectives as I can, just to kind of equip myself with that professionally. Yeah. So, and that's absolutely panned out in that sense with spring tide but yeah your expectations have been matched or maybe maybe exceeded i want to hear more about that in a bit but jonathan why were you interested in, in applying a year ago um i'm trying to think back to november of last year yeah. <laughs> what i remember was that um my history teacher was talking about spring tide because he's been following um, the Institute for a few years. And mm -hmm. he said the applications were open and that, you know, they, you know, focus a lot on, you know, learning about the experiences of young people. And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll look into it. And then I like went online, saw the application. And I was like, you know what, it doesn't hurt to try. This is something I'm interested in. And, you know, maybe it's a good learning experience. So I put my application in and was just like, we'll see what happens. 
because I, I didn't really have much going on at the time. And then I remember when I got accepted, I was like, okay, okay. I think I, I think this is where like I belong mm. and I feel like I will get a lot out of this. And I think so far, um, I don't think this program has disappointed me at all. Like, I think it has met all my expectations to the T. So, um, that's great yeah. to hear. I mean, it's, it's lovely as a coordinator of the program to hear positive reviews, but that's really what we want as, as a research institute that is committed to young people and reflecting back what we hear from young people when it comes to important themes in their lives. Uh, we want to feel like the, the youth and young adults that take time out of their lives to share their input in this way through the ambassadors program that they feel like it is worth their time that their expectations and hopes are are being matched and that they feel like their input is really valued and utilized and i i could sing y'all's praises up and down because each of you has contributed in so many meaningful ways along with the rest of your cohort members to really help us dig into the types of questions we wanted to ask in our research this year. Our research focused on politics. You all helped us think about the best way to come at different questions um, and also help us report our findings out. We talk about um, current themes that Springtide is looking at. We talk about past themes, past reports that we've done, whether that's related around mental health or um, experiencing a sense of belonging amid high loneliness numbers for Gen Z. We've even previewed what Gen Alpha might look like based on a report that surveyed 13 year olds. And even if SAP members are older than 13, they still helped us think really critically about what it looks like to pay attention to another emerging generation since our research now spans Gen Z and Gen Alpha. So Y'all, y'all do a ton. So anytime you want to jump in in this conversation with something that you've gotten out of Springtide or something you've learned about as a result, feel feel free to. Can you just help me describe what it actually means practically to be a Springtide ambassador? What it means to to be involved in this way? How how do you interpret the role in your own life or in your own words? I, I feel like I have a, an answer from the website, but I don't know if you guys have like a, diff, a different definition. Do you want me to give like what I think it is and you guys color, color it in a bit? Is that helpful? Okay. Okay. So the general, the general picture of a springtime ambassador, but y'all fill, y'all fill it in is that you would say yes to a 15 month commitment where we have one meeting a month. The meeting is 90 minutes long. It's always held on the second Thursday of every month. So you can kind of just carve it out in your schedule and know what to expect. We cover different topics in our conversation at each monthly meeting, but we always give a journal prompt ahead. So you get like a month to percolate. You get a journal at the beginning of the program and you can doodle in it. You can write in it. You can never do anything with it if you're more of a verbal processor, internal processor, whatever it is. But it's a tool for you to think critically and to reflect on different themes in your life. Some of the journal prompts might be around um, community, uh, experiencing different senses of meaning, um, different values that you hold investigating who influences you when it comes to being involved in your community or civic engagement. They, they run the gamut, um, many, many different topics, but it's, it's always focused really around what is sort of the intersection of your inner life and your, your outer life. And then, yeah, we reflect sometimes in small groups, sometimes in large group conversations over Zoom. And then we have different project opportunities that you get to opt into, volunteer to be a part of. It might be writing a blog post, it might be on a podcast episode. All three of you, I think, did a really great podcast episode in our current season of the Voices of Young People podcast. It might be helping with a media contribution, 
uh, a number, a number of different ways to have your voice and perspective further utilized. Besides um, speaking into Springtide's findings, you get to help us create more public conversations around the data coming out of Springtide. So that's that's sort of my, you know, head of community engagement, SAP coordinator definition. How do you all describe being a Springtide ambassador? Add anything or underscore anything I just brought up. I think responsibilities wise that covers just about everything, but more of what goes into the work is just a lot of we're given topics to think about, to write about, to reflect on. Usually personally, I save it towards right before the meeting, just kind of sit down about an hour or so, kind of mull it over, think about it, and just discussing things that really apply to us personally with people from, I, for no other reason would I have interacted with any of these people. Right. There is right. no right. conceivable <laughs> angle. And just being able to share stories about our lives and apply them to like how we engage with political discourse, how we engage with religion, how we engage with just living in this age. It's always a great thing to do with friends and family and nearby people, but just the breadth of life yeah. that you get out of these interactions with people from all over the country has been a great enhancement to those discussions. That's wonderful. Thanks, Brendan. What do y'all what do want to add, Jonathan or Maya? Um, I mean, I feel like it's a great opportunity to, to be able to, like, use your voice and do something with it. Um, I feel like, I guess, like, I don't want to speak for, like, everyone, but I've definitely been able to reflect and take away things from Springtide that I definitely am going to take out of the last, what, 13 months, 12 yeah. months so far? 11? Um, and, like, beyond. Um, and, like I said, like, getting to connect with people from all across the country um, and being able to, like, actually understand their beliefs and kind of where they're at um, has truly, like, opened up my eyes to a lot of different things and has helped me be able to reflect in different ways, if you will, which I feel like that's a huge life skill. And like I said, something that I'm definitely going to take away from this. Wonderful. That's so great to hear. What, yeah, what do you want to add, Jonathan? I, don't know, I feel like from Springtide, I've been able to like learn more about myself and how, you know, that my experience is very, although we are all the same, you know, as Americans or as young people, our experiences are still very different and we all come from different parts of the world. I mean, even different parts of this country, obviously. Um, but yeah, I mean, all, all of our experiences are very unique. They're very different. And I just kind of see kind of the beauty in that. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I've very, I've very much developed an appreciation for it. And I feel like now as what, I think, yeah, 12 months in this program, I feel like I'm much more aware of my surroundings and the people I'm like with and to not feel like, to not look at everyone as the other and not to mm. ostracize people, but more like just to respect people, especially with um, our world is becoming right now, um, yeah. just to be more respectful and, you know, be more civil and not, you know, lead with my heart, lead more with, you know, my mind, I guess. I don't know how else to put it, but no, it's I mean, great. That's, that's, that's great to put it. Hearing different perspectives and encountering people from many different walks of life, different regions, different life stages and experiences. If that can grow a sense of empathy, is kind of what I hear you describing, Jonathan. That I feel like we've met our goal. <laughs> um, that's definitely something that we hope the program cultivates. For, for all the participants, that, they, that they're more reflective about their own lives and that they're more considerate of many other ways of being and other perspectives. And you all do such a fantastic job of creating that type of atmosphere together. Um, we create group norms at the beginning of the experience and people are so thoughtful about what it looks like to really create a container in in a zoom meeting that feels inclusive and respectful and inviting and and warm and encouraging that teenagers and 20 somethings are 
hanging out virtually uh, and feel like they're developing connections with someone that they might, like you all said, might otherwise have never encountered. So I already previewed that y'all did a podcast episode. Each of you was in separate episodes of our current season that you can find wherever you get your podcast, the Voices of Young People podcast. They're, they're fantastic conversations. What else, in addition to the podcast one, what are some other project opportunities that you've been involved in through Springtide that you want to lift up now, just to give other examples of what project opportunities might look like for ambassadors? Um, I wrote a blog post um, in February um, on like self-love and ways that like I've grown to like love myself, which it was a great opportunity like for me to be able to reflect on like, I mean, myself and my own feelings and like acknowledge like the growth that I've made. Um, and also like in doing so, like hoping that I'm bringing up other people that have came across that blog. Um, and then uh, I worked on a project um, with a study on 13 year olds and I got the chance to reflect on my time being 13, yes. which was crazy to think about, but super cool um, and give my input on what my life was like when I was 13. Yes, I loved both of those projects you did Maya. Those are great examples. Yeah, if y'all are curious about the blog post she's referencing even, you can find it on the blog page on Springtide's website. We did a whole series where staff members wrote about what it looks like to uh, honor who you are in your own journey um, instead of just like cuffing season on Valentine's, you know, where a lot of that energy goes. Like, what does it look like to celebrate yourself and, and self-love? That was a cool series. I'm glad you reminded me of that one. Yeah, Jonathan, Brendan, you've both done some really cool projects in addition to the podcast. What, what are some you want to mention now? I first I have to say the reflecting on being 13 project was so much fun. I love that. <laughs> it's one of those ages where you'd feel like you'd be just better off forgetting, but just sitting back and thinking about how many things turned out all right and how many things were so important for me growing up was I enjoyed that. But the biggest project that I've done with Springtide that I Springtide if not Nothing else is a fantastic resume filler. And this yes. is 100% gone on my resume and applications, everything is, uh, I got the opportunity to work with a writer at the Wall Street Journal. And with that, I, some random nobody from the middle of nowhere, Nebraska, wound up in the Wall Street Journal, which yeah. was Quoted never with, something I expected to do. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, thank you for saying yes to that. Because sometimes when, you, when we get media takes, it's like a quick, quick turnaround. And yes. um, yeah, you and another Springtide ambassador named Joelle were both featured in that piece. And it was, it was a great article about people who are just kind of tired of the political rhetoric. Mm. That, that's the most <laughs> summarized version I can and yeah. put it as. But yeah, that was really rad to have, have your voice in that piece, Brenda. Um, and thank you for reminding us of it. Jonathan, you've done some other cool conversation writing. What do you want to mention? I think I did it back in October, and I think I, I did this on my birthday. That's why I remember it, um, which I really loved, was talking with Dr. Nabil Twemi yeah. with um, de developing. It was the next um, set of, like, surveys, yeah. right, for yeah. the next project? Yeah. yeah, the next interview guide. Yes. yes. I love doing that. It was a great conversation. I mean, granted, I was going on tangents at some points, but that's, um, that's part you know, of it. You know, that's like, part of it. like that's like the beauty of it. Yeah, like that was just the beauty of the whole conversation. And yeah, I feel like that was that really, really just cemented my love for Springtide. I feel oh. like just being able to just be myself, talk about you know who I am as a person, and potentially help you know with a project sometime in the future. Oh. All of, all of the input y'all give is so tremendously helpful, whether it's at a SAP meeting or whether it's in a special focused conversation. Sometimes that's a focus group with a small group of young people. Sometimes it's a one-on-one -on -one recorded interview to help us think about how we want to phrase things when we do qualitative research interviews or how we want to phrase things in different surveys that we put out with, with young people. 
you're, you all are the experts. And so sometimes we have an idea, we might have a hypothesis, but you all help us really drill into the best way to approach something and sometimes helps us really shake things up um, about how we might have been going into a project and conceiving of something initially. You help us really refine it with solid, solid input. So that's another great example. So you've already heard, there's a smattering of different project opportunities that we offer um, each month. Sometimes there's one project opportunity, sometimes there's up to three to opt into. You'll see Springtime Ambassadors in our social media, on our blog, in our podcast, in media pieces. And sometimes you won't um, see them directly in you know, a research project, an interview guide, uh, a survey, but know that their input is happening behind the scenes for sure. And you might see them quoted in our reports as well. Our big report this year um, has a lot of Springtide Ambassador input in there. And some of them are even quoted by their first name because they gave such helpful input on what it looks like to think about civic engagement and think about politics critically with young people's contributions. So look look for SAP contributions. They're all over the place. And you, you three have done a ton. I want to know how the month to month commitment of SAP fits in with your lives because you all do so much. You're student athletes, you're doing plays in college, you're, you know, leading, I think you lead like a politics conversation club at your school, Jonathan, like each of you have tons of extracurriculars we could list and full lives as students. So how, how does it work month to month to fit this in? Does, is the time commitment feasible alongside your other projects and commitments? Absolutely. For me, honestly, just taking time out to do a spring tide assignment is just a little bit of self care for me in the rush that is the week. But um, like you said, we do a lot of things. I'm involved collegiately in shows, music around the community. It's not a huge schedule burden at all. I, most days, hardly have enough time to eat in amongst doing everything, but Springtide, the meetings are set consistently. Pretty much from the moment you join, you'll know when every meeting you do will be. Uh, the projects for Springtide themselves are typically pretty relaxed, something you could knock out pretty quick. Obviously, that's a lot of per-person issue there, but um, it's never really been a huge oh gosh I have to squeeze springtide into my schedule and even then there are a few times where uh, you had mentioned I do plays yeah. in college and obviously when you're in a show you can't miss a performance or there are just some things yeah. you just can't miss because that's just, <laughs> it's not how live entertainment works but even with that springtide has been super flexible with that they've just like hey I physically cannot make this call. It's just like, okay, fine. Uh, here's what we talked about. Kind of catch up just a nice, obviously miss the experience, but still to be able to participate in the conversation in some way or another has been super nice with my schedule. That's good to hear. Yeah. The goal is that we have you there for at least around 12 meetings is the goal that like people have on average three absences, but we're not like, super tough on that if life happens and we want to we want to be flexible and responsive um so i'm glad to hear that that has been your experience yeah how does it fit in with your lives and and full schedules maya and jonathan um, um i think yeah like i mean like the same thing i've definitely like made it a priority and a point to make sure that i'm being present and at as many meetings like as i possibly can um with me being very busy with my academics and sports and everything. Um, it definitely like isn't super, super easy, but I've definitely made it a point to be present, like I said. Um, and with it being pretty much all online, yeah. um, it's really easy to be able to hop on a call super quickly. Like, I just got out of practice right before I got on this actually, or like when I'm traveling for my sport, whatever, still being able to get on remote no matter what state I'm in. Yeah, um, you've grown from be many different still places. Yeah. Connect. So, yeah. That's and huge. thank you. Thank you that when you are traveling for basketball tournaments or other activities, that you're still like, okay, 
I'll join from the hotel room I'm in or wherever you happen to be on the road. And yeah, we've had people who study abroad that join from different international time zones. So yeah. we, we know that this stage of life has so much going on and we, we want to be understanding about that. And we love that people can bring us, bring us on the road with wherever they might be coming from. How, yeah. How have you made it work, Jonathan? Okay. I'm going to be completely honest. I, <laughs> sometimes like I forget to do the 15 minute assignments. I will admit that life I'm not ashamed happens. for saying that. Yes. Yeah. But like life happens and I've, I really appreciate that. Like the whole springtime team, like you and Christian are so forgiving because if I did this like at school, oh my God, would I be in trouble? <laughs> it, is not, it, it is not like, yeah, a, it's like not. you know, you're not going to get graded on anything. Yeah. <laughs> there's no, that's like the nice there's, thing. Yeah. There's no assignments that you're like, oh, you're, you're in trouble if this didn't come yeah. through. But yes, we do. We have the project opportunities that you get to opt into. Mm -hmm. And the 15 minute assignment, I'm glad you're mentioning it, Jonathan, because I did want to at least cover it briefly is just sometimes it's a quick survey. Sometimes it's a quick send us three sentences in an email answering this question. Um, the current SAP project is just, hey, invite a friend or a peer to apply to the next cohort of SAP. So it's usually something that should take 15 minutes or less, hence a 15 minute assignment to do in the, in the time between each meeting, month to month. Um, okay, we just have a few more minutes. So can you all give us your best invitation? Like why? Why should someone apply to SAP? Whether that's a friend you already have in mind or just a peer, a generalized peer, someone your age, anywhere in the US, why is this something they should really consider applying to for the 2025 cohort? Um, if you would like an opportunity to be able to share your thoughts, opinions, and beliefs and use your voice, I definitely like highly consider just sending in an application um, and also like I've touched on a lot in the last like 30 minutes if you want a better chance to be able to connect with people from all across the country that like we've all said we would have never connected with if it yeah. wasn't for Springtide yeah. it's a great opportunity to do so and like we've also touched on great for resumes and all of that um, and is like I said what I've gotten out of I mean already the 11 months that I've has so far are things that I'm going to use for the rest of my life outside of springtime. Love it. Jonathan. Oh, Brendan, it's up. It's on you right All now. Right. I guess the decision has been made. I'll speak next. <laughs> um, my biggest thing with springtide is I, I say this a lot when I talk to people just about life but you don't get very many opportunities really truly to talk to people outside of your usual circle that's, true. that's life that's true. we yeah. are creatures who live in our communities if you get a chance to reach out which is a wonderful part of the internet a wonderful part of springtide take it you hear so many things that you would otherwise never hear and that's just a great thing to have becoming a fully rounded person it's a great mm -hmm. gift to have mm -hmm. It's opened my eyes to a lot. I'm super thankful for it. And I said it earlier, Maya seconded the thought, but it's, it is such a good resume builder. There is yeah. no other way to put it. Yeah. The amount of opportunity that I've got to learn. Yeah. I'd never get these anywhere else. It's, and none of them are particularly difficult either. Nothing has ever had me at my desk pulling hair out. And it's just, I, I'm published. I'm in a podcast. Yep. I'm in the Wall Street yep. Journal. I have all these things that didn't really take much strain or effort, and it's been fantastic. We, we want young people to have bylines and credits and places that they can put actual links, yeah, where they're quoted or published or interviewed, that they feel like they've stretched their leadership skills, their communication skills, mm -hmm. and... I'm, I'm happy to hear that you all feel like this is boosting up resumes, college applications, scholarship applications, all of it. Yeah, Jonathan, what would be your pitch, your invitation? Why should someone apply to SAP? Um, I would say, I think the biggest thing is like SAP is just 
a great community of people. I mean, it's not just an organization. It is really like a collaborative group of people who like take the opportunity to share their own experiences and kind of learn and develop, like learn about others and kind of develop an understanding of the world around them. And I really think that is a nice thing to have, especially on a like nationwide level. Yeah. And um, I think, yeah, like what Brendan and Maya were mentioning is just all the opportunities that you're given are just like, they're just amazing. Like there's no other way to put it. Like I've never had, I've never been part of a program that has had this much like opportunities than I think I've ever had. Yeah. Like this is oh, probably the biggest one yeah. so far. Yeah. And I think, yeah, the 15 months are very short. But I'm going to be completely honest, like, we're almost done, and I feel like we yeah. just started. But, like, the 15 months that you're in this program is entirely worth it. And I think, especially now, going into a new year, um, yeah, being able to use your platform is, on a bigger level, I, I think, is probably the biggest thing I can probably see as a benefit with joining SAP. So, great. so yeah. yeah. So great to hear. We have someone from our very first cohort, the 2021 cohort, who's commented in the chat tonight and Blake said, SAP opens up doors. So I really, I really hope that is the case for each young person who, you know, gives up their time, volunteers their time, shares their experiences with us in this way. We don't, we don't take it lightly. So we hope you all are getting things out of it. And it's, it's great to hear that is the case. Several of you mentioned a teacher, a mentor who said, hey, you should apply. So if you're that adult right now who is listening and has a young person or a couple young people in mind, give them that extra nudge because each of these ambassadors in tonight's conversation had some trusted adult figure in their life who said, hey, you should, you should think about this. And they, they took them up on it. And usually our most active, invested ambassadors had that mentoring figure who encouraged them to give this a try. So um we we love those sort of referrals i think we could you know blast this out all over newsletters and social media but the personal invitation goes so far so if you're a young person considering applying we'd be so honored to have your application it's a really quick process like 20 minutes if that it's three short answer questions and then just basic contact information on our website we're accepting applications now through Sunday, December 8th. That is the deadline to apply by midnight Pacific time. So you can get your application in by the end of the day, Sunday, December 8th, but apply now. Don't feel like you have to wait or stretch it out. We don't need recommendation letters. We don't need essays. It's not as intense as the college application process. We want it to be an easy lift. Um, we just want to know why, why you'd be interested in this. What do you see yourself getting out of it? What do you see yourself bringing to the program? Feel free to reach out to me if you have follow-up questions. You can find my contact information on the SAP page. Um, you can find the application on the SAP page as well. So go to springtideresearch.org slash SAP, S-A-P. Thank you, Maya. Thank you, Brendan. Thank you, Jonathan. I truly think the world of you three. I, I love my job because I get to hang out with thoughtful, intelligent, passionate, curious young people like yourselves who really make the world a better place. And thank you that you give of yourselves in this way to SAP. I'm glad to hear you all feel like you're better off for it. I, as the coordinator, definitely feel like I'm better off for it and knowing each of you. So thank you. Thank you. And we look forward to seeing applications continue to come through.